like black. You know what I mean? The heads. Oh, huge number for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Great. So this and Allah subhanahu wa taala said this is the language of the land at that time, which is the Arabic. Now this is the mother tongue of the Prophet. This is his language. You know, you studied in the seerah his life that when he was young, what the Arab used to do. What? They were very they were good what? in speech. In exactly. This is one. But it, what they used to do, these small children, where they, 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 they exactly they right. send them to the Bedouins. They send them far from the city to learn the language. To learn the language. Yeah. You know, and who took the Prophet Sallallahu when he was young? A Bedouin woman. Her name is. Halima Saadiya, right? Halima Saadiya took her. She was, you know, we learned that she was, they were traveling, their, their, their animals were so slow, they were behind everybody because they all come mm -hmm. travel in caravan to get to the city of Mecca, take the children, and they try to search for the wealthy family. Why? Because they pay, they have the money, right? Take the children back with them, they stay with them a year or two, or three years sometimes, and bring them back to their family. And they will be excellent in their language, in the Arabic language, okay? So this is like the university of learning Arabic is the big one. Mm -hmm. It's like right now, Harvard. So this is the, so, you know, they were complaining, they were behind the caravan, behind because their, their, their animal is sick, would not move and all that stuff. And when they get to Mecca, what they say, they search, and they end up with, because everybody took, everybody arrived earlier, and right? And everybody refusing the prophet. Why? Because he was an orphan. He was an orphan. And why because of that? The, the family, because of the orphan, they don't have money to pay. Okay, so everybody was refusing him. And it came to Halima, and she refused him in the beginning. And she went there and searched for any other child that will take with her. Did she find? No. And they say, well, we cannot just go back empty-handed. We have to take somebody. It's an orphan, orphan. At least they will pay us something. We're not going to travel all the way and return with nothing. So they were blessed to take one, went back to his grandfather, and they took Muhammad. And the, their journey of life started from that point. And Allah changed their life because the blessings of this child that they took, they were ahead of the caravan. The animal is speedy. They cannot control it. And the, 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 the milk and the, the sheep and good fat, everything. is Everything that Halima relates <coughs> is a strange about this child. And then when she went back when they were about to return it, she was begging the family to keep him. And they accepted because of the blessings that she got from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Muhammad sallallahu was sent to learn the Arabic language. What we call Prophet sallallahu was utiya jawami al kalam. That means oh, so my time. Oh. Uh, that means his speech is collective. Like when he speaks few words, but his meaning is beyond that. Okay. So this is the mother tongue of the Prophet sallallahu and also it's an ancient ancient language system. Yes. Look. Anybody speaks Hebrew these days? No. Very few. Very few, mm -hmm. right? Anybody speaks Aramaic? Nope. Nobody. Nobody. It's <laughs> gone, that language, right? A lot of languages disappeared through years. Does Arabic disappear from 1400 plus years? No, millions of people right now speaks, all of them speaks Arabic fluently. So that language is being kept and kept very, very strong. Um, also, it's a rich and efficient and accurate language, as we said before. You know the, uh, the lion in English? What is a lion? A cat. The, the animal? Big cat. The king of the jungle. The king of the jungle, yeah. The lion king, you know, the movie. <laughs> so, any other me any other words for lion? That animal that you know uh, in English? No. no. So we have one. You yeah. know how many in Arabic? Five. That refers to the lion? Yes. 
Well, I don't know if this is a line, but Dr. Amen asked us this question a long time ago, and he said the word cat. Yeah. And he said there were more than 600, I think. More than or was it six thousand? More than six hundred names for lion. Yeah, it's a lion only. Only lion. Wow. So all the Arabs at that time, I'm they would have kidding. about six hundred <laughs> names. All of them referred to lion. Okay. So every word in Arabic has different meanings. Unbelievable. How about dog? In Arabic, kelp, which is dog. In Arabic is dog, right? Dog, it's a dog. What? There's canine. Canine dog, is not. That's a uh, canine name. Oh, well, yeah, dog. that's that's yeah, that's more but of a scientific. Not, uh, it's yeah. a canine dog. <laughs> but it's a dog, it's dog, right? Yeah. You know, in Arabic, 70 names for dog. Wow. So this is very rich language to learn and the meaning. And that's why when you read the Quran, you say this word, this word is referred to other things. And we're going to learn about this, and you'll be amazed, inshallah ta'ala, as we go in, in language. Like for example, a rub. Rub means the sustainer, the churcher, the provider, the Lord, all of this. It's different, has many, many meanings in, in, in Arabic. Uh, also, uh, for example, in Arabic, they in English. They is what? A female or male? Can be both. Either, right? Yeah. Either. You know, in Arabic, it cannot, it's not either. either. They home in Arabic, home to males. Okay? Hunna uh, females in Arabic is home. So in Arabic is very specific also. It will tell you they, when I say they in Arabic, home, I know all the Arab knows they are males. When they say Hunna or Huma or whatever, we know they are females. Like for two, okay? Two in two males in Arabic. In English. Two males in Arabic is Huma. So we know it's a male or female. We can be able to so accurate in, in when it comes to language. You know, in the time of Musa, he set up the story of Musa when he was, when he ran away from Moses. Pharaoh, right? Moses? Mm -hmm. When he ran away from Pharaoh and he saw those two women are waiting beside the well to take the water. You know the story? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in, in the in Quran, do you know the story? Mm -hmm. Inshallah, put that in your agenda. We'll Talk about it later on. In the in, in Quran, what he says when he went to them and start talking to them, and they say in Arabic, qalata. Qalata, if you want to see this, use one word. It says qalata. That's it. I, as an Arab, I want to understand this in English that the two women say. In Arabic, how many words were used? Qalata. One. In English, how many? The two women say, that means four words compared to one word describing what they say. See how the, the Arabic is so rich and it is it. So they may say few words in the Quran, you may say a verse, but the meanings is, is tremendous. Sometimes some of the scholars, they issue a whole book of one verse because of one verse of the Quran. One of the verse of the Quran, he issue a whole book explaining that verse. So the meaning tremendously uh, is, is really, really important. So those are the, uh, this is the beginning. I have not started yet, but um, those are uh, the beginning in, in explaining the, uh, about the, you know, the Quran and there's uh, other things I was, yeah, also it's a list in space and writing, I'm sorry. Can you recap the first? I will, inshallah, I'm just yeah. So it is list in space and writing. So when you write in Arabic, or in English, like one paragraph. In Arabic, it's about like one third or one half. It's an efficient language. Efficient yeah. in that. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, like when you see the vowels, you know, like what they say, instead of writing two M, you write one M, but it has tashkib, what you call uh, on top. And also, it's been sent to all my kind. I don't want anybody who, you guys, this is where in America I was, this is for the Arabs only. Okay, it was in Arabia. It is not for us. Okay, um, and so it was sent to the Arab, in Arabic language. That means it was sent to them. Okay, so look, if somebody, anybody told me that. He said that means uh, Jesus was not for you, right? Jesus was sent to whom? The Middle Israel. East, and he was speaking what? Aramaic. No, he was not speaking Hebrew. Aramaic. Hebrew. Aramaic. 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 Arama
He well, was sent to the, he, he, to the to the to the Jews, they but they Hebrew, say yeah. they say that he was speaking the Aramaic, and the the book was written in Hebrew. Okay. So, so he was not. He was already translated. It's already messed up. Yeah, yeah, it's already messed up. So he was not sent to Americans, or to uh, Australians, or to the European because he was speaking, you know, uh, a different language. <coughs> so it doesn't matter. Allah sent him to that to, to those people at that time. But now, for example, if a doctor or a surgeon who discovered a new uh, way to uh, cure somebody from a certain disease, for example, and he put his uh, research in English, that means the guys in the uh, Middle East or in uh, Japan, they cannot learn from that or study him and use it to cure other people? Definitely. It become a law, probably. become something very important in the medicine world. So, when we say Arabic, when we say Prophet Muhammad, that means it was sent to all mankind, and everybody could understand. What is strange about the Quran, and I will finish with this, that is strange about the Quran, that it is also easy for the tongue and the heart to know it. I have seen, you know, uh, non-Arab speaking, like for example, if from India, Pakistan, if you come over and talk to him in Arabic, he doesn't understand. Especially Arab, he doesn't speak fast. Okay? He doesn't understand. But tell him to recite the Quran, he will recite the Quran from the first chapter to the end chapter better than me. Amazing. Amazing. Children at the age of six years old memorize the whole Quran by heart. We have uh, we attended mass for the those mass convention, mm -hmm. and that boy that who won the memorization of the whole Quran, how was uh, was his age? Nine years old. I think so. He, he memorized the Quran when he was nine years old. And there was an elder lady that memorized it, and she used to not be able to read. Yeah. Yeah. So right now we celebrate if my child is. And 15 years old, memorize Surah Al Fatiha, we make a party for him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And he, 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 a shafi, a shafi, one of the intimate scholars in Islam, he memorized the whole Quran by six years old. Okay, by heart. A shafi, because he was so, you know, um, has the ability to memorize, he used to put his hand on the other page and learn from this page. Because his eyes go to the other page, he memorized the whole thing. He says, one time he was walking in the street and there's two people fighting in a different language. Mm -hmm. So they took them to the judge and they brought the Shafi as a witness. Because he memorized what they were talking about even though it was a different language. <laughs> to be, you know what I mean, as a, as a witness into their case. So Alhamdulillah, Quran is easy for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you have that open heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you to memorize the whole Quran. But also, I've seen people who just hear the Quran and just want to hear more. Well, who have never been, been Muslim or around any of them. It, and it, it is being encouraged in yes. the hadith of the Prophet for you to kind of, I don't want to say Rhythmically sing it. Say it. Right. it, it yeah. To so say it like that, why? Because <coughs> it would become easier for you to memorize. And when you have a beautiful voice, believe me, you would have khushur. Khushur is uh, concentration and focus into the verses. It will enter your heart. Sometimes you may not understand some of the verses, but it would really enter your heart. Okay? The last thing I would say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'll leave you with this. Allah in the Quran says, وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا And if it's, if it's not been sent by Allah, other books, then you will find so many changes, so many errors, errors in it. Okay? Any book. You know, just imagine somebody who given you the Quran mm -hmm. and tell you that this, as he revealed it to you, he will challenge you. He says, as the second chapter says, that you would not find any error in this book. That means the, error, the, the author is what? He's confident, right? Mm -hmm. He's strong. He, he's telling you, he's challenging you that you will not find any Prove error. Prove it wrong. <laughs> That's it. I, I'm, this is the first statement. You will not find anything in this book. I'm giving so, you a, a promise that you'll not be having to prove it differently. And we will discuss that. Okay, You will see at the end 
really how is this book is being put together and why this is the word of Allah, why it is the speech of Allah, no other book. You have one minute. Okay. Can you recap the first few? Recap. Few? Recap. The first one, two, one through five is what I had. Wow. Uh, Just, just one through three. Um, okay. Um, or you can do it at home. Other things. I talk about a lot well, of things. The very beginning, uh, of, the what beginning of the say when I say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected this book and mm -hmm. guarded. So no one will be able to make any changes, especially the Arab at that time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They were living with the Prophet and they were excellent in the Arabic language. Like one of them is named Al Walid ibn Mughira. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that. He it could is. he could not challenge the Quran. He could not challenge the Quran. He said this is a magic to him that a man among them would come over with these words that they are not familiar with. Well, there's, or, a, lot, the, 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 the there's a lot in the Quran as well that the Prophet Muhammad did not understand because it was talking about travel at the speed of light and how the people will travel from one place to another that would take months where they will do it in the space of a day, the span of a day. The expansion of the universe, things like expansion, that. Expansion, but, right but it was, yeah. Trimesters yes, of pregnancy. but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened his heart to those knowledge. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Prophet well, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam understand it, it, it was him, but, but opened his heart to this mm -hmm. knowledge, you know, especially when he was... I'm saying it shouldn't have been understood at the time. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I agree with you, 100%. Mm -hmm. So this is the, and this is the book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, has no uh, crookedness in it, and we uh, talk about that. Any other questions at the time? Um, what was the and, um, Did anybody take notes at the very beginning? Because I talked about different things. Uh, um, the, the other scriptures were sent as a complete book. The Quran was sent over a span of 23 years. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, to confirm belief in your in it and, and have no doubt in your heart. Mm -hmm. He talked about out of line mean. Mm -hmm. Allah promised to keep it and protect it. Uh, he did say, uh, I got from Surah Kaf. Why is it in the Arabic language? It's the mother tongue of the people of that time. And that the Arabs sent their children to the Bedouins to teach them pure Arabic, which they still do in some areas today. Mm -hmm. uh, it is rich, efficient, Arab accurate. It is a few words, but with an expanded meaning. It's easy for the tongue and heart to know. Exactly. MashaAllah. I have any questions? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm going to assign you. Yeah. We got any gonna, secretary right now, officially, you'll be assigned yeah. to give the... Uh, say coffee for the rest of us. The summary. Of, the summary of everything. I have a question. About. Isn't there a hadith uh, that Prophet uh, Muhammad <laughs> would, uh, would smile when he heard a non-Arabic speaker <coughs> like reciting Quran or calling the Adhan or something like that? Do you know that one? No, okay. <laughs> but uh, his, you know, in his time, there were a lot of people who don't understand, you know, speak the language, right? And they understand it in a different meaning, you know, like Arabs, yeah. like well, Sudanese, for example. Some manifesting. What's that? Some yeah, they, they come from Roman, so they don't speak the Arabic language. They learn it, yeah. but they don't. Even though some of the Arabs, because of different countries and different tribes, some of the Arabic word meaning is different to one of another. You know, for example, right now, if you find somebody from Morocco, don't tell him, Allah ya'atik al It means Allah give you the strength. That's an Arabic language translation. Don't give him that. Do you know why? Because in their language right now, if you say that to him, that means you, uh, you will go to burn in hellfire. <laughs> So, so, so it's if one time in the time of Khalid ibn Walid, Khalid ibn Walid is one of the best um, strategic planning in war. Okay? He was one of the leaders of the army of the Prophet. The best the sword of Allah. It's a, it's a sword of Allah. He was from Ansar. From Ansar. In his time when they have a prisoners of war, so he told one of his soldiers, Alayhi uh, salam. He told one of his soldiers to go and, it was a cold night, to go and uh, warm the, 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 the prisoners. You know, because it's so cold, you know, set a fire and let them sit around it because it's, we don't want them to be, you know, to be in this cold. You know what I, that, that soldier did? He went there and killed him. <laughs> 
when they brought him back to Khalid bin Walid, he says, Ya Amin al you put the name that means in Khalid in Arabic means warm him. You make sure he's warm. But in his in his understanding of that language, Adfiyahu in his tribe's meaning means Uqtulhu, it means kill him. So so that's why that the, the, the uh, how important is the Qur'an is being collected because of that, because of the different tongue and pronunciation uh, or the tribes or understanding to the meaning. The Sahaba at that time, they felt really important for us to read the Qur'an the way that we see it these days. But we also we discussed that. that in the Sirah as well as when Prophet Muhammad told them, do not uh, pray Asr until you have reached the gates of the Huzayr. But, yeah. So when some of them understood that they had that meant just go in a rush, but pray your prayer on time as you're supposed to, and some of them said, got there after Maghrib and prayed their prayer there, the Asr prayer with the Maghrib, <coughs> because they understood it to mean don't pray Asr till you reach, and the other said just rush. It means go fast. You know that's how urgent the issue was. So yeah. Any other question? Is that, is that, is that what they say? say like is here? The, the, so I, I said, inshallah, he's more, mashallah. Yeah, was, it was, it was an honor for him to yeah, say, attend the Arabic. Well, they say that, they say that the Quran um, standardized the Arabic language. Is that what they mean by mm -hmm. taking some of the meanings and making sure that... Because, I mean, if you It's read a unifying it, language. It was mm -hmm. the, it's the proper language that unified all of the tongues. And the Arabic language, language was surrounded with with the, the Quran, <coughs> and the, the meaning of everything. Okay. So how does they know at that time to not, if the if the different words meant different things to different tribes from different places, how did they not exceed the limits of what the Quran meant? I mean, how did they know not to exceed the meaning of the Quran, or how did they know what meaning to take from it? Yeah. Because they have learned it from the Prophet Straight from okay. Mm -hmm. Definitely at that time. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were explaining things to them. That's where the so Quran and the Sunnah comes in hand in hand. I mean, yeah. it was back to what he said. It touches your heart. Oh. The meaning is here, but it gets here. The brother that did the uh, the uh, doing Ramadan in Homewood, the brother that did the recitations. I mean, it was just I could listen to him all night. Oh my gosh! Yes, I thought. Yes, Take time. Product, you can, I mean, anytime you like. Of, <laughs> yes. It's in our community forever. Yes. Yes. You know, I could imagine the words flowing out. You can you actually know, picture them Picture almost. the words yes. coming out. Not just, it, it was different. I don't know, but he did the... I feel the same. Uh, uh, he's available for tutoring, by the way. Yes. Yes. And how about, how about you, you, have, you listen to this to the citation of the Prophet? Right. So, and so, where so, the uh, enemies, like Al-Walid ibn Mughira, and Abu Jahad, they used to sneak at night to go and just listen to his recitation of the Quran because it's just <coughs> touched their hearts, unfortunately, <coughs> touched their, their, their enjoyment of listening to it, but really did not, unfortunately, change uh, their heart change their and they insisted because of their. They're still yeah. There's a news lady that she heard the Adhan and became Muslim. Just hearing the Adhan. Subhanallah, the words that Allah tells you how to come to the prayer, you know, and how the people came. Subhanallah, it's beautiful. And in some places, but the Adhan is just beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. In Amman, Jordan. The very first time I heard the Adhan all over the place was when I went to Kuwait. The first trip I went to Kuwait, and I was sitting awake because I was like, Still like yeah, this. when you go to uh, so those who went to the uh, like this uh, British reporter, she went, mm -hmm. and they took her to the uh, top of one of the buildings yeah, at treasure sorry. time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the guy told her just wait, because it's just the time. And then because she was that building was surrounded with so many masajid for mm -hmm. And then at the time, all the masajid, this one said Allah, what what this is, and then uh, this Allah, and this Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And she just was staying and listening to the Adhan, and he said such a beautiful thing. That and he's one of the uh, one of the uh, rap music guy that he was give, uh, like taking a tour in in Dubai, mm -hmm. and probably he, I, I think I'm not sure uh, of the story changes uh, to became a Muslim because of the Adhan. 
that he, because he was a singer, that he represented. Yes, yes, a few of them. Like Bill Springsteen, he, uh, most deaf. He's one. Oh, oh yeah, most of them. Yeah. I most saw him on the uh, He's the most damn. Did he change his name to Bilal? I don't know. Yeah, I've seen it. But Stephen Colbert tried to play me the little. He wasn't having it. It was really quite a, and he had a partner with him. But he was most damn. But he was, he was, he was quite serious about the whole thing. He was there for something else, but he wasn't playing around with Islam stuff. Any other questions? Very because you guys are going to understand. So I think it's related to, um, yeah, that's an <coughs> really important question, like, you know, how do you know that this is the understanding of the Lord? And, and the most important thing is the Sunnah of the Prophet explains the Quran. But the other one is that there are, um, the Quran itself also explains the Quran. So, so, so a certain word is used to mean a certain thing in different places in the Quran. So it gives you and a certain And the situation that was going on yeah. as well. A yeah, lot of times, the because they were the there, yeah. they knew what the situation yeah. was, so they understood the meaning much better. Yeah. And that's why the tafsir, when we're trying to say, well, this means mm -hmm. this, and that, mm -hmm. we cannot just walk around mm -hmm. saying what we think it might mean. We have to really research it. <coughs> you know, I really want to appreciate Brother Zahir for even requesting this, this, this lesson, because without his insistence on it, I probably would have put it off and put it off and put it off. <laughs> But um, the minute I told Ahmed that I wasn't going to let him not continue <laughs> to do this, he immediately started studying. So he didn't start yesterday and prepare yesterday and continue. He's been studying for two and a half weeks since I told you that he agreed. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not, it's not a subject you can just take lightly and walk around with and, and pretend like it's no big deal book. You know, this is, this is something that should be so important to you that you don't want to not memorize it. You don't want to walk away from it. You don't want to put it away all the time. You want to be reading it constantly and understanding it. And if you don't understand the verse, go and find out what exactly that was pertaining to. Because there are some things in there that are a little bit, you're like, what does that mean exactly? So the beauty of technology nowadays is that we can look it up, you know, Google it. There's an app for just about everything you want to Shows you how to, find where out. to put your tongue to say certain letters and how yes. to hold your mouth. I have a question it's about beautiful. Arabic. But just be careful where you Google because there's yeah. a lot of uh, uh, application or sites are not mm -hmm. good sites. Mm -hmm. So you have we, to really yeah, ask if it's good site or not. I have a question about Arabic. Uh, when I'm studying Arabic, um, usually it's me trying to have a conversation in Jordan or something, but I'm studying, it, it refers to, it says standard Arabic. Mm. So is that the same as Fusha? Is that the same as Fusha. Quranic Arabic? That, uh, what I'm learning, what, when it says, it means I see, Arabic. I don't even say that correctly. Yes. The, um, but it's, but that is the same as Quranic. Um, that standard Arabic is considered the same it's thing. It's the most so. understood standard language. Because under, it, it, it covers all the dialects. Because I will say something to someone, and my niece was constantly telling me, you know, auntie, they don't understand what you're saying. I said, they understand what I'm saying. I just don't know what they're saying back because they're using slang when they don't back to me. So the modern standard Arabic is, is the official language of, of every Arabic country. And it's the same. And, and that's what you hear in the, like in the news and stuff like that. And there are some little differences between it and the Quranic Arabic. So for example, so, um, in, in, in our understanding of certain words in our modern standard Arabic, is not exactly how the how the Quranic Arabic is using it. For example, like the word kebid, um, we understand it as lying, and the Quran it really means untruth. And, and so, uh, so, so, so you may be someone who's saying the untruth, and, and that's actually important because some of the hadiths, you know, that people attack certain of the Sahaba, yeah. they they will say they kadabt, you know, someone responds to them kadabt. He's not telling him that you're lying. He's really telling him you're saying that the, not what you're saying Inaccurate. is not true. Inaccurate. But he's not accusing him of lying. So, so as long as I'm not writing a book. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah so. Kind of certain things like the word ta'wil is also in the Quran. It it means certain things, and in our usage of the Arabic, yeah. is, it means the, the meaning would be different. Like There's still going to be some how they slide, explain yeah. that. But in the, our language, normal language, it refers to one thing. Yeah, and the Quran may give you different meanings Correct. to what. Yeah, where it means. So kind of you want. To, so, so that's what's important for the Arabic speakers is not to. Well, I really understand this. So now you really, they, they really have to look and, and, and see what exactly. The Arabs have to look at the tafsir, not yeah. just 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. we fell into error because we assumed yeah. something. Yeah. 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 Okay, we're supposed to follow that? Yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry. I got the Now I'm here. Sorry. I'm was uh, excited about doing this because it always gives him a, a chance to research and learn, and he loves studying. It's not something he does as a um, necessity. It's something he does as a love, as a as a desire. Um, alhamdulillah, I don't ever walk up on him and he's not looking at some scholar speaking about some subject or. Um, researching something that he was looking at that somebody said. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Here, here, here. The baby Okay. Um, so if you can start practicing working through the Qur'an and constantly reading each day from the parts of the Qur'an, it's absolutely the best habit next to praying on time. Praying on time is the first best habit. The next would be reading the Qur'an as often as possible. You don't have to be at a certain mindset every time you open the Qur'an. You should open it daily. It should be a constant endeavor that you learn something new from the Qur'an every day. This is your gift that Allah gave to you is guidance. And without it, we just sit around and don't really improve much. We don't feed our souls, you know, so... That's just an advice, but um, I hope you guys all take it. I work really hard to keep myself doing that. It's not a complete habit yet, but I'm, I've been working at it. Um, and it is something that once you do it, when you stop, you feel bad that you didn't do it that day. <laughs> you know. So try. You'll start to notice that when you when you haven't read the Quran today, you haven't had as good a day or you haven't had as fulfilling a day, subhanAllah. It just, it's a very different atmosphere. Um, we are, Monica's going to be back. She's probably going to leave this part of the class just because I had to skip 29 to get to 30 and 31. You guys, I was, with my ankle, I was really, did not have a chance to get to my, um, I was on medicine, so I was not the clearest minded person while I was taking my medicine. So I will, um, we're going to be going through 30 and 31. What do you, about this way? That's what's about it. That's what's And where's your shirt? Khadiha. Yeah, that's what I want to come. Have a good day. She's wearing a shirt. Where do you No, no, it's okay. Leave it to close. Leave it for the door where I had it. No. Um, but. Who was able to get through 30, 30 and 31? Oh, look, my harassment worked. I told him, I told Ali, we need to get you in here more often, <laughs> Um. Um, hey, by the way, if you want an example of the language going wrong just by dialect, I was studying, what, the only thing I had available to me was an English dialect uh, book of words, a, book, a small uh, mm -hmm. dictionary type thing. And I, when I was living in Jordan, I went downstairs and I was trying to ask him for an envelope to write my mother a letter, and he kept trying to give me some soup. And I kept going, no, with the Octob in me for America, post office. <laughs> and he kept handing me the soup, like, what is wrong with you? Like, you know, and I was going, no. <laughs> was well, you, you said it's correct. Yeah. yeah. No, I, oh, yeah, I kept getting the answer kind of back in Hindi. No, you said oh, it correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I cannot see soup. Yeah, yeah well, none of it says I, I don't know what the word was I was using, but it, apparently it was, he was just like... It, it, they have gotten better in the years that have the followed. The thing was, they were beside each other on the shelf behind him, and I kept pointing, and he, I know he just he just couldn't stand me. He just thought, here she comes again. I've got to listen to her. What's even funnier is that he kept the envelopes <laughs> next to the soup. Yeah, that's, that's the problem. But with it, a lot yeah. to that. Don't use an Egyptian dialect if you're trying to talk it speak to someone in short yeah <laughs> it doesn't work okay so how, how many read 30 and 31 okay okay so
Yeah, yeah. thirty with four. Oh, I forgot what it was about. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh-huh. Okay. So this, the chapter 30 really was talking most about the times that they were living in peace and that there was very little um, <coughs> uprisings or anything like that. Um, and the thing that the author is trying to highlight in this is that they were doing outreach, just like Brother Ziad was, and I want to make mention of that before we leave today, um, an outreach to other communities to just share what beauty that Allah had given to us and to the, the people at that time. And not so, not just to the Arabs. And, and that was something that was really, really kept in the forefront of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's mind. So, um, go from there. Me. Oh. Okay. All of you. I, what yeah. did you find beautiful about this? I mean, I found quite a few things, so I'm going to hold mine to the end. Well, I was what? looking at the fact that uh, I strategically how uh, he knew that he had to have uh, the beat for his preacher to be able to go out and uh, give the word and, and uh, discuss Islam to people. How uh, he knew that he had to have the roads clear. He didn't have, need to have anybody stopping them and any forces and. He knew that other. He knew that there were still people out there that that uh, that did not want to see Islam spread because it was going to change the fact that they, all the looting and all the stuff that they, that would have changed their lives the way they because some of the or people, taking away their kingdoms right, or right. whatever. Some of the people, you know, they didn't care. They didn't believe in. They were lawless. The words just I just looked at. They were lawless. They didn't care about any agreements. They didn't care about treaties or anything. And they, they knew had no that. Morals. And they knew that if they if, that if Islam came. It was going to change all that, so they didn't want it. Referring so, to the Bedouin groups. Yes. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So one thing well, that he did, I liked it, that yeah. he strategically knew that I need to make it so my preachers can go through safely. Mm -hmm. so, and he also took the stand never to wait for the people to come to him. Yes. Always that was, to go but all, but all the way through, the fence. But all the way through, though, uh, uh, he always did that. You know, he, mm -hmm. he knew that he had to. No, I'm right. saying this in in regards to even sharing Islam. He didn't wait for the people to come right, seeking right. him out. Like some of okay, them did. Yeah, like I see uh, what you're uh, Salman al Faris, who, all of these different people were right. coming to find out who is who is this new prophet, you know, and is he real? Because we've been waiting for him. So some of them started coming, but the large population was too. not coming to him. So right. he knew if I wait for them. It's not going to, they will never get to me in time before I'm mm -hmm. gone, you know. So he took the offense, which right. is sending the people out. But in a way of doing it was to keep them secure in the process. Make sure that right. the message actually landed to where it was to supposed to. Those preachers, so he started, yes. to, I always, I can clear in the path. Yes. That's what I would call it. This is 7-A-H, too. This is 7 uh this is a 7 AH after Hijra from Mecca to Medina. And so this is year 20 of the 23 years the Quran was revealed to him. Mm -hmm. So uh, <coughs> he knew his time was in, is drawing near. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, I love that, that he, you know, he loved his brothers and sisters so much. So he did not, he never put people at risk. He also loved those he was sending them to because he didn't ever just send them to conquer and, right. you know, pillage and, and destroy. And he made, he, he, he made sent sure them he with a message, and he sent rules with each thing. Exactly. Right. I love that. Mm -hmm. What else? Who else saw something different in the chapters? Um, just the discipline that, yeah. his, exactly. um, tri that his, you know, his group of followers had, mm -hmm. like that one incident on page 567, mm -hmm. about the guy who didn't give up his you got to shot arrow twice. You got shot twice. He just pulled it out and laid there. I mean, this, twice. This, they're, this, those, their sacrifice and their discipline, not only, you know. Or being offered to attack a different group. Like Omar. Don't go home yeah. without like doing Omar. nothing. Let's he take the other group. Well, hey, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, don't do it. Notice that yeah. was the guide. That was the guide that said it wasn't a necessarily, I don't even think it was a Muslim that said, hey, there's this other group. Here. Those guys yeah. took off when they were It was a guy. Yes. But uh, there's this but other group But we don't know if he was Muslim or not, though. It doesn't say. It just right. says the guide. So I thought perhaps he wasn't even a Muslim. They, 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 they talked about that twice in the chapter mm -hmm. about how 
Well, Mark didn't attack during that. That time. I loved that, and there was another thing that I loved about the discipline. When the letters did go to the other emperors, and one of them, which one was it? Um, no, that was one of them, but this is another one. When he had actually accepted and said, I wait for your answer. Oh, uh, he really um, waited to uh, read it. I want to say it was the one from Yemen? Not Egyptian. Uh, Yemen. Was, uh, Bahrain. Oh, Bahrain. No, he Bahrain? was, yeah, the, the, yeah, he, yes, read the, he, read the he said, yeah. and this, this is the statement I think a lot of the non-Muslim world loves to use against Muslims, where he says, be good or I will remove you from power, from your position. Now, this statement was written to a Muslim person. He's saying, you are now under my direction. So if you're not following the rules I send to you, then I will take you out of your position. He was not saying this to any non-Muslim or uh, other religious group leader. And this is something that a lot of non-Muslim or other religious people try to attack Islam with by saying that uh, he went and conquered the places and took it out of their power or whatever. Understanding first that he said he sent the messenger inviting the leader of Bahrain to Islam and he said, I've read it to my people. Some of them liked it. Some of them didn't. I wait your instructions. And his reply was, if you continue to be good like this will leave you where you are and the guy did accept islam mm -hmm. oh he did uh, yeah he had accepted so, it before he this said is in when the name of god, god this is the god merciful god. the beneficent from yeah. muhammad god's messenger and this is where muhammad was writing to him and then he yeah. answers back i'm waiting for your right. your instructions. instructions well he's saying i have now accepted you as my rule as my leader. Uh, leader you know so He's telling him, be good, and you'll keep your position, and everything will be fine, and follow these rules. And he, didn't and he did. Anybody. He, he didn't. stayed all the way. Yes. He that's also, that's a beautiful thing about this chapter. Who else noticed that he, how he picked the people? Prophet Muhammad picked the messengers to take the letters to the people. The envoys, the different outreach people. How did he pick them? The first one was buddy. really great. The first one was really great, because what did he do? He said... You'll uh, we said you'll be a guaranteed Jannah. Yeah. Will will I be given Jannah even if I fail? Yeah, yeah, yeah even if they say fail. no. Yeah. He was the one that uh, the angel used to come looking like him at one point. This, yes. yes, he was a very, very, nice very, very handsome uh, Sahabi. Dehia, I don't know how to say his name. Dehia, Dehia, Dehia. There's the dog word again. But he was from the he was the tribe of Al Kalb. But this is. There was a uh, tribe. Help. Really? Not Benin. 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 No, no, and, uh, oh, Benin. Okay. Yeah. yeah no. Anyway. Right. He picked. He picked. Yeah. He picked the best <laughs> that, that can relay it. He was the bad dog. <laughs> yeah. He picked the good people that can relay it and bring the message to them. Who Where's were it? wise in their relating? Who were very good under pressure? They didn't just snap with a bad temper right away like mm -hmm. me. Diplomatic. They were they were smart in handling um, different things that were coming at them. They were. So Omar they didn't know then. Uh uh. Omar, <laughs> you notice Omar was not on any. See. <laughs> I don't like that statement right <laughs> uh, because Omar is not a, is, is not someone who loses his temper. No, we know. Uh, that was right. simple affection. It was just a joke. That was simple affection. It was just a joke. No, Omar, Omar was chosen for specific purposes because of his character. When right. he needed to go straight forward with something and Omar. it didn't yeah. matter if the people were upset or not, Omar was the man. Okay, here I am. Aren't we the best? Then I'm going to go and do this, you know. And it's not, um, he, he didn't mean it like that, Dr. Hussain. I, I know exactly no, where he's coming from. <laughs> <laughs> but he picked people who had a very wise manner about the way they uh, say it home. He was, they were good in, um, and in well, well, they had also communication and they were done, political know, standing, so. different um, uh, situations that he's dealt with, different... Um, there were certain in intricacies of each one of the leader or um, envoys that left. Each messenger was had an intricacy of character. None of them were exactly the same. They were all different. Who was he sending them to? That's who he chose more with the characteristic now, and the knowledge of the people. To me, even more important than that is that 
the reason why he didn't send Abu Bakr or Omar or stuff like that, or Ali or Rothman, is that um, he loved all of his Sahaba. Mm -hmm. And so, so he didn't say, well, you know, this is very important, you go, you go, you go. He spread it around. He gave know, the reward to, yeah, to a everyone. bigger uh, mm -hmm. thing. And, and so that's... But also, the the um, if you look at it, the all of the four Khalifas were those who spent the most time with Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. Had they gone off on these expeditions, they would not have been around him the most time to learn from his character and his rulings and things. So there's a wisdom behind each and every step. So that's, I loved a lot of the different things. And while I was reading, I was thinking all these different, I mean, I was like ADHD all over the place today. Um, but it was amazing to see the wisdom that was given from a man that everybody thinks was just crazy. So many people just thought he was crazy. How do you think a man is crazy when he's capable of doing what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did? And in the way he did it, the wisdom and the, the beauty of the decisions he made. And some of them were not great decisions. And Even he accepted being corrected. <laughs> I loved that. Even by what you just said, by some of them, thank you, Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan. <laughs> yeah, Sufyan. Well, even, even he knew that he wasn't crazy because you could see when he went to... The emperor, when he Hercules. goes down to the emperor's verdict, uh, you could see then when he had called him in and uh, to talk to him. Even even through that, he mm -hmm. he had to, he had to he had to testify the truth about the prophet. Because he didn't want these people that knew him right. to think he's a liar yeah. or right. give the rumor that he's a liar. So, even so if, he had to even, tell the truth. Even if he didn't like him, um, or even did if he didn't, uh, the, the problems that he had with him, he had to tell the truth about it. Something I wanted to ask the class uh, was that. Each time he spoke to each group, he spoke to each leader, sent a letter to each leader. They were it was basically the same message, you know, saying that this is this is Islam, Allah is the only one, and so forth. But he also, for yeah, the majority of them, said there if you do not yeah, accept yeah, Islam, yeah. there will be a group yeah, in yeah, your yeah. name that you like. For instance, in Egypt, it would be the Coptic Christians. You will be re, you will yeah. be responsible for the yeah. Coptic Christians. You will be responsible for the I believe Magians is the word. Yeah. So. Why do you think he told each group, he told each leader, if you don't accept this, you'll be responsible for, except for Negus. Yes. He did not say it to Negus. He said, uh, or did he? I don't believe so. Uh, you, uh, why would he say to each leader, you'll be responsible for such and such group? Because they were the best among the people, right? Well, I'm just asking. Yeah. They were the purest in their belief in God. Well, it? well, let's, I mean, let's just discuss the idea. Of why tell the leaders... You'll be responsible for that. Well, they're leading their people. If they don't accept the message, they're basically leading their people into the hellfire because they. Get but they weren't their people. That's what she's trying to say. These were a group that were under their rule, but they were. That's what I understood anyway. Right? Well, it's, it's isn't it the, the leader is responsible for the nation that he leads? I mean, he assumes the position yeah, of leadership. Yeah, but they were a minority. Think, of thinking the about yeah, the time. if you think about what's going on at the time, sometimes like the chief of the Coptics that he wrote the letter to, he was in charge of the Coptic Christians yeah. and stuff like that. But a leader had a lot more effect. Remember, we're talking about at a time where, not like we are today, we're obstinate. If somebody tells us to stand on one foot. You know, we hop up and down on both feet. Or so, you know, we do the opposite of what you tell us to do. Uh, the uh, But at the time, your leader had a lot more influence, and there were a lot more repercussions if you didn't follow what your leader said, right? Uh, what else? He, he was also, he wasn't saying, I'll attack you. He was saying, because why, why didn't he say, I'll attack you in those letters? Why didn't he say, if you don't do this, I'll, I'm going to come in and take over? Why didn't he do that? There's no what in Islam. There's no compulsion. There's no compulsion in Islam. These letters were very friendly. Well, it's, 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 it's also to draw the warning of what they would be questioned on in the Day of Judgment as well. It was an invitation, no, it was an invitation but a reminder. Different. It's the same as when you say, some of the letters were a little different. But yeah. what what's, every time I talk with a non-Muslim or a person of another religion and I'm offering the glad tidings, I always give also the, the warning. If you accept Islam, then you will be among those who are winners, who are succeeding, who will succeed in this life and in the hereafter. If you choose to stay away from Islam and uh, deny it, then you will be among those who are lost, who will spend in the, the hellfire, because now you have been made aware of the truth. You have no excuse. So this is part of what he's giving the glad tidings and the warning. 
also, I think, I don't know what you're trying to get at. I'm, from your question, I'm thinking, whatever we get. I'm thinking that these smaller groups were the purest, closest to the concept of Islam, and they were the best of the groups that were in each city. And if they heard the message of Islam, they would have immediately become Muslim. Just like, uh, there was no that's, what, that's what I was reading throughout. It was required. Yes. The leader would have to be the one to get that information out there, though, or anyone that heard the message that was around when the letter. Niggas. Yes, just like what the, the letter he sent to him. Uh, you know, uh, it looked like he, he, the way he wrote that letter, it was passionate toward his feelings. Like he, mm -hmm. like he knew with how to write the letter to that group. To each person. Right. Yes, because he specifically talked right. about Mary and Jesus. You, right. You can see how he wrote yeah. that and how, and you can see kind of in the readings and then also with somewhere else I read about this, by how he touched him, by the way that he... He wrote the letter in the way that it was, it was personal. Right, how yeah. personal and how he took it. You know, and then even when I read it myself, it opens your heart up to, yeah. toward that you know that truly this is true, that this is the truth about and where the Christian but, went astray. <laughs> I think each group that was mentioned, they are not all sharing exactly the same features. So, so like the Copts was the like the majority religion in Egypt, and right. maybe that in Coptus is which is like a Catholic kind of a, Christian. Yeah, he, uh, he could have been like the, the religious leader for them. The Magians were the majority religion in the So Persian they were all Empire. the majorities. I was the, under the, 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 the now the, the, Aris, the Arisians, the ones that are of the, the in the letter of Hercules, was was, was a persecuted uh, group mm -hmm. that was considered a heresy actually. Okay. Yeah. The uh, that, that 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 kind of group. So so that was a group that the the Byzantine Empire actually directly um, considered them heretics and and, mm -hmm. and mistreated oh. them. And so it's. Um, I remembered reading that part. Yeah. I didn't know that part. Yeah. Yeah. So so so, so the Arius he. he yeah, you know, so basically he was saying you you carry the, the, the sin of, of that group, like you know, for the Arisian, like you you carry the sin of that um, yes. of that mistreatment, whereas that's for the for the Persians or the Copts, you carry the sin of keeping them where they are, you know, you're closing the door for them to improve. I, yeah, I'm just not that deep. I was thinking in things terms of, uh, I'm sorry, about like she, she, that's what, mashallah, you know, that's what Miriam got from it. And me, I'm thinking in terms of, I'm just more of like your everyday reality kind of idea. And I'm thinking in terms of communication because if yeah. they didn't relay that to the people, okay. uh, it wasn't like they had TV or radio or CNN or 24-hour news coverage. I'm, you know, I bring that up a lot. You have to remember how this information was being spread. Oral tradition was so important, and I was also thinking in terms of, you know, remember it was you didn't go against the religion of your father at this time. Still, even then, not like today. We are examples of, I guess, being a little more independent as as we've uh, throughout the years. So, uh, anyway, those are the things I was thinking of. But I really I like the idea of. Of thinking in terms of, you know, were they the majority? Were they, we have one group that's being persecuted, and we have other groups who were the majority religion that the, would be listening to what the leader had to say. And I really, I, the uh, Negus and then the leader of Bahrain were, you know, my favorites because Negus was such a positive response, and it was all about, you know, I guess being a former Christian because he was talking about Jesus as a prophet and Mary, and, you know, he, he was very. But you have Probably to remember that Negus was down. one of the, he was the first yeah. uh, group, the first group of uh, migrators sent were sent to, to him. him. Right. And he accepted them with open arms and back when he, they were in. And Medina. he pretty much yeah. had accepted yeah. Islam, but this was his way of saying it openly. He had always, he had already accepted Islam prior when he sent his uh, um, um, but, but, but the question uh, the, that the writer was writing is that it's not very clear if this is the same person or another person. Yeah, they so. were debating on if they he was still the ruler at that time. It's question, historically, it's questionable if this was the same Negus, but they also said that the uh, this particular Negus, who we know he, he, he took the, the same person, he probably but, is because, because he, he was came, young. Yeah, because he came in to he came right. in when he was young. Yeah, and right. he died a few years after this, so it was it would fit the it would fit the time frame of the lifespan at the time. I didn't catch that. Uh, but at the same time, you know, remember the Negus was a friend to the Muslims when they were still in Mecca and being persecuted right. by their own relatives mm -hmm. many years before this. Mm -hmm. So you know, the Negus had always been a friend, but he still got a letter. He yeah. still got an official letter inviting him, you know, to well, be open. Well, he was the one who performed the marriage of the Prophet Muhammad right. so to Umm Salman. 
Because, you can't because the word negus is not a name. It, it's a title. It's a title. title. So so it's the so very much like the okay. very much like a husro uh, is, mm -hmm. is also mm -hmm. the a title. Emperor or whatever. Caesar. Okay, so Caesar. I didn't catch that when I was reading. I was reading really. Right, but you know, to me that wouldn't be important. Honestly, it wouldn't be important to me personally. I don't, I don't get, I don't worry about. No, but I want to talk to the chief of the talk, to talk yeah. to, uh, you know, the, someone the letter, else. The letter was very important. The way yeah. the letter was, read, was uh, what, that was that really touched you. The, the letter that he that he and he knew that. He would touch him by because he was. Uh, did you say former Christian? Uh, yeah. What did you Negus say? Negus was. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ethiopian. So, yeah, so he, yeah, so he yeah, knew. So he, he knew what to say to him. Right. To touch him, and he had already expressed that how he felt by when he when 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 the first group of immigrants came to him, and he and then he gave them. He he, he You remember when he first said the first group came out? What we just talked about. So so the prophet already knew that he was his heart was soft. Or that the the, the the group. There was open to Muslims being around right. them because they had already been in the community for quite a while. Mm -hmm. So, and another group that was Christian were the Copts in Egypt. And what did he say? You know, what did he say to them? He made a reference to who? He didn't say it by name. He said there was one that came before you that claimed mm -hmm. uh, uh, what that he was God he was or about that Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was yeah. talking about the Pharaoh that you know. Right. He talked about so, you so know. Like so they knew that. So they were Christian. They knew that story. Mm -hmm. You know. So. And you know what he, happened to him. Kind right, of like, you know, right. So. He wasn't God accusing God his God person God. of that being yeah. that way, but he was saying, you know what Be happened careful. to the other guy. Yeah. So uh, we, we, we agree on that story. We know what happened yeah. to him when then he tried to go beyond God. Then you had the ones that didn't accept it, that wanted to, have, wanted to wage war against mm -hmm. him. About, uh, how, could he, how could he send me this and he's my slave? Yeah. Well, the, but that was actually, it, it had other interesting twists, you know, the, mm -hmm. the first yes. story. Yeah. Yes, yeah, he, he said to his um, Yemen, Yemen ally, uh, kind of uh, under his control, like, mm -hmm. and then the one in Yemen was, was smart, you know, he he played it the, the right way, like, you know, he sent two envoys right. to kind of give the order of, of the leader of the Persians to the Prophet He never said, I said. <laughs> yeah, and he said, this is the order of, of Husserl. Stuff like that, and and we're coming carrying That's that. That's the Arab mentality. So, so, so it, it, it was very. Uh, I thought that was a really interesting thing. And then then the prophet sent him a response back with, with the with with the two guys and um and, and, and kind of telling him, well, your your leader was killed. Oh, you know, uh, the, the night before, so like, you know, this letter is not the angel, really the valid. Angel, not just killed, but yeah. killed by his son. Yeah, yeah. By his son. the angel yeah. told him that information so, beforehand. Yeah. So, so he yeah. gave him like a proof of prophethood, and um, because he didn't know, what, even at the time when they arrived, and then the letter comes from the new pastor, well, mm -hmm. he stopped what, what my father was saying, and you know, exactly what the prophet said was going to happen. And what was yeah. interesting, too, was that the son who had killed his father to gain leadership in Persia, uh, he sent he sent a letter to him saying, you know, I'm the, uh, not to Muhammad, I believe, but to the uh, to officers the Yemen, in yeah. Yemen, and he yeah. said, I'm your new leader. I killed my father yeah. outright. I killed my father. I'm the new leader. So don't do and, uh, and don't do anything to Muhammad right now. Yeah. Isn't it the you one? know, because he wasn't sure, quite sure what he wanted so to do yet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so he even stopped the order. He's like, we don't have the business. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, his interest yeah, becomes like, you know, yeah, yeah, Persia. Yeah, Persia. He killed his father and then. Uh, because he didn't want someone else. He said, if someone were to kill my father, it should be. No. No, 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 no. That was a Muslim that said that. Okay. But, and he, his There's father was of one of the people who was battling this man. And he said, don't allow one of my brethren to. Kill him because I fear I would want to kill my brother. That's an that earlier point. part. Of it. But yeah. you see, the, the son killed his father that. because uh, Persia was dealing with some internal turmoil. Yes, they just they lost a big battle. The... Well, well they, they lost a big battle with the Byzantines, uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. and and so so they were defeated. You know, um, kind of like there's some changes, internal changes. Yeah. The leadership is being questioned. So knowing you know. your history, knowing your American history, knowing your Islamic history, knowing world history, knowing your, your lineage history, it's all important. It all affects all of this. It really is. Knowing your world history is very helpful in this type of thing. I learned a lot so. after getting out of school because I wanted oh. to understand where did all oh, yeah, of this yeah, come yeah. from. You know? Your teachers hope so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most of my knowledge of history comes Post high school. Yeah. Yeah. Out of interest rather than yeah. 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 I like history though. Of being made One of the things, <laughs> yeah. I think we really, um, 
I'm breezed over right the now. Hercules story, I and I really want to. I really want to okay. pull out a couple of things from that. And like uh, we were mentioning, oh, yeah. how Abu Sufyan was like, uh, I can't look like a liar in front of my peeps, you right. know. That <laughs> so was, I gotta, that was deep. That's I gotta, I gotta it's tell the truth. The story too, and the yeah. way the questions were asked is, how do you know? Why would Hercules ask the questions in the way he did? And he wasn't correct, the first correct. one to ask the questions in this way. This Every is time you guys say Hercules, Hercules, I think of Hercules. the scene right. <laughs> of the Princess Warren. Hercules. Hercules. So just for anybody that may be watching the future video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how we don't, don't want to mix it. I, I, I think it's the same one it. we're thinking of. Oh, it's, it's, same, not it's, not the same, it's the same word. It's the same name. It's the same it's, American. It's, it's, I think her, yeah, but it's the same person. It's yeah. spelled the same. Yeah, we're just I, it's I the way you pronounce it. I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. My well, husband, I asked him, him, is this really Hercules? And he said, yeah. There's no A in Hercules. He said, it's the. It's not the. There's no A in Hercules. It's not the. Maybe another God. one. But remember, we're just talking about oh, names. Not that. Not Hercules, the yes. God. I'm talking about well, the guy who was a battle. Yeah. He was a warrior. He was. But that's what I'm saying. But see, that that guy was a half god. Oh. According to no, no, no. But, but Hercules is history. not an unusual name to find in uh Hercules in is H E R C U L E S. Heracles is H E R A C U. Yeah, I prefer Heracles right now. Quite a few typos in here. I prefer Heracles when we're talking about Heracles. Okay. Anyway, the story behind it is beautiful because if you look at the the questions, what kinds? Listen to the questions. What sort of family lineage has he among you? Was any of his forefathers a king? Has anyone among you come out with a similar claim before him? Do the majority of his followers belong to the aristocracy? Or aristocracy. 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 There you go. I was. I do it both ways. Or are they poor people? Um, do they increase or decrease? Uh, does any of them? Uh, turn away from his religion after he after having embraced it. Have um, have you ever known him to lie before he started to make his claim? Is he given to treachery? All of the answers. Have you about ever life. fought him? How and we'll we'll bring that up. Yeah. How did time. your fighting go? Mm -hmm. And what sort of commandments does he give you? You have and that, we'll mention what. Heracles actually states after he hears all of these answers. If you look at them, Abu Sufyan, because he has to tell the truth in front of his people, out of arrogance, not out of honesty and, and decency, okay? He was also fearful to be seen in front That's of this particular guy who could die. Yeah. It wasn't just the guys behind him. Was, right, but he, they said he specifically lied. said, exactly, yeah, but he, he specifically said he didn't want to be known among his people right. as a liar. And also, he, he was one of the enemies of Islam also. You got to remember Huge that. Huge enemy. Uh, he, and he was but now he was actually the, the relative of Prophet Muhammad at this point because he, he was, he was yes. his father-in-law, is he not? Correct. Right. His father-in-law, yeah. correct? But, but he, he is his cousin. I mean, but I mean, uh, also his so. father-in-law. He's married to his daughter. So I mean, he's like the closest in relation in many different but I think ways. We have to kind of the way we look at Abu Sufyan. He's not Abu Jahl. No, you know, no. He he always. Um, yeah, he, 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 he never denied that the prophet was a good man. He never said right. he was yeah, he was exactly. a mercenary. He was destructive. He was awful, bar barbaric. None of those things. He just but he just didn't charged. want him to take away his yeah. power or yeah. his, his privilege. So privileges. he never openly like called Muhammad a liar or a magician or anything like that. Not no. to any, any of the like historical. About him that not any prop. Yeah. Not anything that sounds. And even like when the prophet uh, entered Mecca, he saw Abu Sufyan. Uh, on, on, and they, they had a, a talk, you know, and Abu Sufyan became a Muslim and he went to Mecca and he said, you know, whoever, whoever enters my house is a Muslim. So, yeah. so Abu Sufyan's um, uh, animosity to Islam is not, was not, was never at the same level as... No. It was never yeah. So he was kind of yeah. like a more reasonable person. Right? He, he knew the truth. He just didn't want to go with it yet because he was going to lose everything he was doing. We'll talk about yeah. that when they go back into when uh, a little bit in a few chapters. But he he's the final tipping point yes. for the people to become Muslim uh, in Mecca. He was Muslim. the biggest voice at the time yeah. Yeah, as well. I, he was I one of the main leaders. He was one of the biggest voices. But he was also the first to get out of there when he knew he was losing. Khalid, 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 <laughs> like, was, Khalid was one of the first too. 
uh, intimidation yes, yes, yes. or without feeling like shy to say it. I used to be shy to say, if you accept Islam, then you will be from those among uh, among those who are winners, and if you deny Islam, you will be from those who are lost. I used to be really shy to say that, but when I started teaching this class about three years ago, that changed quickly because I realized that I should not fear what somebody thinks of what I'm saying. I should fear what Allah has ordered me to do, and that's deliver the glad tidings and the warning. So, Jazakallah khair. Well, they were, they were able to do this for the first time. Why? Because... They're enemies to the north and the south. They had a treaty with the with their with their own. Ahmed will be doing the sessions every Sunday, and if you'd like to join that as well, he'll be talking. Yeah, if you can. Yes, you can sit up here with him. I'll sit here in the audience. Take notes. <laughs> The, oh, I can't remember what I was saying. Uh, that they they had the uh, the treaty with the Quraysh and Mecca. They had uh, both, they they had a partnership with the Jews. Negative situation were neutralized. Yeah, they had a, they had a uh, Heber and Heber. They had a, an actual partnership mm -hmm. with the Jewish groups now, uh, where they were half and half. And I want we did emphasize enough last week yeah. that that partnership that they had now. It wasn't. It was how much? What was the split between the crops that the the Jews of Heber were going to? Continue to uh, cultivate, and they were going to just split half and half. What, what was the what was the percentage that they were splitting with them? Half, exactly, half and half, 50, 50. We didn't emphasize enough that it wasn't. Yeah, no. Yeah, I do that all the time in the class. Uh, it wasn't 49. It wasn't, it wasn't 49, 50. You get a marble if you were in my first grade class for catching my mistake. Um, it wasn't 49, 51. It was. They weren't. They didn't try to get any type of little advantage in that. I, I, we just didn't they emphasize taking, that enough. Yeah, they were not a, taking advantage of the other group because they were stronger. Total, total 50, half 50. and half, 50, 50, you get the same as what we get. And, and we did talk about how if that group said, well, the way you, when he came once a year, the, the fellow that came to, uh, to split it, if they said, well, what you split is not fair, he'd say, then take the part you want. You know, it was just extremely fair. We did talk about that and how the group, the Jews of Heber said, this is, you know, the world will be wonderful if we all work like this. And so, but we didn't emphasize enough the fact that it was 50-50. We don't know of any other, have you ever heard of any other group that where that happened? Where something like that happened? What I also like no. that the author was emphasizing in this, in chapter 32, was also 30 as well, was the fact that there was no more animosity between the two groups, the Muslims and the Jews, at this mm -hmm. time. They actually, the, the Bashir ibn Sa'ad ended up seeking... Um, protection and, and refuge with that group that they had made the treaty with and he was allowed to stay there and get better and then he came back to Medina during when he had been attacked remember from right uh, when he was going to Fadak it was uh, no not Fadak when he was going to the people of Mira and he didn't he got there took the cattle and on the way back they caught back up with him and right. took the cattle right back and injured him, and I don't know how many people were lost. But when they took the cattle back and they left, he didn't continue on to Medina to get back to the Muslims. He, he went to the healed. Jewish tribe, and he for was for, for healing and help. And yeah. help. But that shows you that it was not a constant uh, vendetta between the Muslims and the right. Jews. It was not there when there was peace. And it was held on both sides. It was held honorably. And it wasn't just, let me take over, let me take over. You know? So I liked, I liked that. Um, I didn't feel like it was emphasized again. enough. Yeah. Yeah. And it should have been emphasized, emphasized more. Anything in here that you took notice of that wasn't really a major standout that we've already discussed? What about the uh, story of where the... the the dis you were talking about the discipline of the guy who got shot with the arrows but didn't move, and all he was doing was collecting information. He, he wasn't. Was, he was on. Uh, he was recon. Control. Yeah, he, yeah, he was on recon. You know, call it recon. Did that remind you of another story? <laughs> yeah, the one where they were. Where he was making a salat. Yeah. It's a lie. The yeah. guy was praying and he got shot yeah. two or three times yeah. and he didn't Starting stop praying. The, mountain, yeah. the cave or the entrance yeah. of the 
yeah. place between the mountains. And we emphasize you don't have to do that. If someone shoots you with an arrow, you can't stop your prayer. Yeah, because I can't, I can't imagine concentrating on anything else but an arrow in yeah. my body. I I that, that's beautiful to me. That if, you can, if, if it's like a fly buzzing around you, right. and you're so concentrated on your prayer, imagine the faith that's involved in that. These are the people who are hanging on to Islam, who are like, we're going to give it up. But look, they didn't even, they were being tortured. This is the other thing that you have to remember is that these were the same people who had been tortured and didn't say, I don't believe in God. Who continued to say, Ahadun Ahad, La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah, and none of you are right. I know my truth. That is the same people who were praying and got shot with the arrow, or laying there waiting for the information and got shot with the arrow. Those are the same people. They already suffered bigger things than that, so the arrow was no big deal, really, you know, honestly. Yeah. But I would have stopped. <laughs> you know, we're big who, babies. Who nowadays are we anyone to compare to any of them? Subhanallah, how far the, but we're do we, we're do we accept this and stay where we're at? Do we accept that we're nowhere close to them and stay where we're at? Or do we make every we effort to get to that level? That's our job, is to make every effort to get your faith to that level that no matter what's happening, the prayer will never stop. The duties of your daily life will never stop that you will allow no one to interfere with your ability to practice your religion. That is what our level should ever should always be reaching to. Did you notice too that, uh, especially in the last story about the, the ruler of Bahrain, uh, that he told them that to, uh, to accept the, uh, the pledges of, of the Muslims, forgive them of their sins, let them keep what they have in their hand, and we will not dismiss you from office. Uh, and those who wish to stay, Jews or Majans, should pay a tribute as a sign of their loyalty. So this is the Jizia, uh, is that how you say it? Jizia, Jizia? Jizia. I don't know. Um, the, you know, Muslims pay what every we pay. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, you can. It's a tax actually. And it's a very small. It's a tax. type of tax, but it's not. I hate to even use the word tax because in Islam, we don't pay taxes. Right. But this is yeah. a ta This is a fee yeah. that is given to the people as a protection. Right. Given to the Muslims under as a sign of loyalty, saying, okay, I'm I'm living here and I'm paying for the right to live here among the people and. Also for you to for protect protection. me from anyone who might try to attack me. Because there are other people in the community that are not as nice as some of the other people. Mm -hmm. Just like we have the officers and, and stuff like that here. You don't want to be in a situation where you do not have security. Just like we've been talking about, the whole chapter's been talking about security and making sure that everybody who went this way or that way was secure and would be able to come back and unharmed. It allowed this to be an established area that was protected. And also, I wanted to point out... And not this, forced into a religion that they didn't want to do. This, uh, this particular... Well, to use the word tax, I hate to use it. It was small and it was according to what they could afford. It was not something that they were, you know, like you might hear yeah. about later in other history where people were... Uh, like in a fiefdom or something in uh, in England or something. Yeah, right. yeah, just took everything, yeah, just took everything yeah. you had. This was not it. Was Robin, small. It's not Robin, if you could, if you could afford, if you could afford it, and what you could afford. You know, if even if you could. So it, it was it was also a fair to it, they were being fair to the people in that regard. And as I've said many many times, there is the example of uh, one time the Muslims were going to be attacked. I think this was much later on in our history. This was after Prophet Muhammad's time. They re, they refunded that they refunded it to the people and said, "You're going to need, you know, if you need this, because we can't, we were, we know we're not going to be able to uh, protect to protect you with this particular group that's coming." So with the the jizya, does it go towards the same as the zakat with the helping of the poor and, and the people? Usually, it goes to uh, build the army and the armor and the pay for the you know the which is what they're paying provisions for. for the for the protect. actual sats, battle. But the people under the protection of the jizya the did not have to serve in the military. They're not no, obligated no. to serve. No, never military. obligated. No, no. They and actually they they unless they are, you know, with an no they they had treaties with people that they accepted them to fight with them. Oh, okay, you remember. Right. So unless they were willing participants. They were not in the battle. But it wasn't far. It was far on the Muslim name. Well, it was, when it was called, those who were capable of doing so had to come and do it. 
because that's their job. Right. Only when, and because it's life and death. It's right. not, you know, we would like to go over there and, you know. It was not about looting. <laughs> it, it was not about it spoils. Wasn't about it was only about stuff. defense. Yeah, it, it was, was about, about defense. It was yeah, about right. if we don't, they will. They never right. attacked. They never attacked unless they were about to be attacked, ever. And it was given in several times in these couple chapters. Well, and that's later, the other thing. That later on in the chapter, you're going to see when uh, when we go into another chapter, years. they're going to talk about something similar to what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. When uh, when when a messenger, one of the messengers, uh, is going to be killed, then they're going to kind of get into that. I think you're going to yeah. really enjoy this next chapter, a second trip to Mecca. I think this is it's a little less than 20 pages, uh, and I think you're going to really enjoy the, the content of this one. Go ahead and read chapter 32 for yeah. next week. We are going to be here at 10 o'clock sharp uh, Sunday as well for Ahmed's uh, second session. Um, we don't want to start too late because then we'll be drawing over and over on all the other times as well, inshallah. Please read up because the more you know, the more you understand about these uh, situations, the more we can discuss and really enjoy the actual was um, it this week so much knowledge. better than me just like rattling on to you like last week, you know, because everybody yes, crew, <laughs> and except for two people, much better to have a conversation. Yeah, much better to have. I enjoy this I so like, much more. I Tony like this type. No. Uh -oh. <laughs> everybody, a lot of people read their chapters. I've been soccer last week. But now. The, 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 the beauty, the beauty of this setup, I think I like the setup because. It gives us all a different perspective to look at. We can all look at it from somewhere different because we're all different people. And the diversity of this class should rep be represented in the teaching process as well. I don't like just one narrow direction. I like the diversity. I love hearing how this one thought that and, oh, I didn't get that from that. I got this. She had something totally different than what I, than what I did. But... Very good points on every single yeah. point. I was so happy to hear so many different directions that were coming. It was beautiful. Okay. So you make me happy when you do this. So please continue so. I deserve it. Three years of teaching my class. You guys need to make me happy in the class. Of we had a few people but in the process, you're, you're pleasing yourself as well. And most of all, you're pleasing Allah. Because Lord. learning that knowledge, learning that information takes you so far. And preparation, it's just like each letter you're reading, you're rewarded 10 times. Count, count how far we've read so far in letters. Some of us. In letters and how far we've gotten in our reward. SubhanAllah. And Allah, like Ahmed was saying, Allah does not forget. We'll forget. The angels call our name and praise our name to give our name to Allah the entire time we're here, but also in the preparation process. Each step you go towards Allah, Allah takes 10 to you. How do you give that up? You know, how do you not prepare yourself in a way that you've got Allah running to you, not you having to chase anything? SubhanAllah. That's the beauty of that. Islam. That just gives me goosebumps. Yeah, the enormity of Allah. Um, <laughs> Anyway, bismillah, inshallah, Allah reward all of you for coming. May Allah give you all an excellent and blessed week. No May more snow. May protect you. So May yeah. protect you all. Right. Right. May give us all a safe and wonderful no more snow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 No, no more snow. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, like oh, oh, okay, guys. The outreach program that uh, I was mentioning, Brother Ziad Awad from the principal at Aya. Um, he is Thanks, extending, I've already mentioned it on WhatsApp and stuff, He's an he is extending an invitation.